guessing the balloon is pressurized with saline. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Since air is heavily compressible and water is not, then you probably want some yeah, saline to the, solution. So. Yeah, because we need to really, the pre, uh, can you pass the, uh, okay, you want to see that? Uh, take, take the towel off. Looks like we're <laughs> so, so it just transilluminates, Michael. Mm -hmm. Darren, can you feel that in your frontal forehead sinus area? Uh, I can feel something down below the eye area, but not up in the frontal. Okay. We're going to inflate now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And one, and one more time here. Okay. Now I'm going to take this out here. And then you can see all the way up into that uh, sinus, forehead sinus, through the, through the uh, muscle. Okay. And then uh, let's go and do the other side here. Okay. 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 Uh, can you do me a favor? Uh, can, I have a quick, can you scroll through the uh, images here to the front of the screen? How's it looking, sweetie? Mm, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I could be watching NCIS. <laughs> <laughs> The left that was had more of the um, swelling and mucosal thickening on this side. And, uh, quite a, there's a bit of a punch back here. There's an area of blockage here. We're just opening that up now. Okay. Okay. And what you find along the way. Just that we're going to, uh, you know, just kind of take away that blockage here. Okay. In a kind of non invasive way. Just bring that down and it just kind of opens that area up a little bit quicker. And I'll just have the balloon. Mommy, you getting all this on video, honey? Yes. Your mother will be so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> She's a PA. She is? Yeah. Where? In Kentucky. She actually just retired that's, for like the third weird. time. She oh, retires, she gets bored, and goes back to school. All right, you might want to take the external <laughs> picture there. You see how it's lighting up? And I can even move it there. And we'll pass the balloon. Now take the internal picture. Go ahead and inflate that. And then let's do it again. And now I'm going to withdraw the balloon. And you can look way up in that sinus opening there, okay. Can you show that too, Michael, so he, he sees what the balloon looks like and there's a fiber, the light fiber on it. So oh, that's yeah. where we're putting up in there and yep. there's a balloon, and it's, it's on a rail, it goes back. Mm -hmm. Cool. Seeing like right? Yes. How you feeling, honey? Good. A little crack, crack here, a little crack, crack there. Can you turn your head towards me? Can you
They're very, they're, they're, they're not scared. You have to, they're, they're not scared at all. People. Depends on what dog. Yeah. Might be like, what's up? <laughs> Our dog is afraid of pigeons. Really? Yeah, that probably wouldn't work. Yeah. Well, they're actually bigger than hers, so. Oh, she's teeny. Oh, wait, that is. Oh, yeah. Are you ca capturing that one? Mm hmm. Okay. Section three. So, um, well, that, that was your, what they call your sphenoid sinus. Okay. Which is at the back, uh, at the back, it's the back wall of your, it's like way at the back. Mm hmm. So now we'll do this side. Uh, and the white at the bottom is the gauze, correct? Oh yeah, that's the gauze. Mm -hmm. yeah, let me have the section, please. Looks like chicken gizzard, honey. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. As long as it's not gray matter coming out, I think we're good. <laughs> you don't think you have some to spare? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I got plenty to spare. It's just a matter of finding that segment versus something that's important. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Probably some of your some of the uh, go ahead. Probably some of the officers that you encountered felt the same way, huh? Yeah. <laughs> can have their free her again. Yeah, the officers were interesting when they came back uh, into the engine room. Mm -hmm. They had gone through all the training and everything and thought they were really on top of things. Yeah. And uh, if they were, you know, if they were nice and cordial and everything, then we'd help them out because we've been, you know, I'd been operating the reactor for a couple of years and mm -hmm. knew what was going on. And yeah. So they get in there and they kind of flail a little bit, and then we'd start help, helping them out. Well, occasionally. But did they one. take the same? They didn't take the same course you did. Um, a little different. Oh. Yeah, they do. So uh, they do an extensive course. Yeah, they still do an extensive nuclear. Course. Now, are they all uh, graduates of Annapolis? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Most of them. Most of them. Yeah. Um, occasionally, you'd get an officer that really thought he was hot shit and knew all this stuff. Right, right. And he'd be telling you every little button that he wanted you to press and all this stuff. And so oh. whenever it came time for, uh, you know, they run drills to make sure that everybody does what they're supposed to if there's an actual emergency. Yeah. And so by the letter of how things are written, the officer is supposed to command the actions that have to be taken in the maneuvering room, which is where the throttleman, the reactor operator, and the electrical operator sit. Mm -hmm. So he's supposed to know and supposed to actually give the commands for everything to happen. Okay. And that's generally not the way it goes down at all. Mm -hmm. Normally, the uh, you know, throttleman, RO, and electric operator are mm -hmm. they're, um, announcing the actions as they're doing them, and the officer just says, he just acknowledges. Mm -hmm. And so if you got one that was a little big for his britches, mm -hmm. you'd just sit there. Alarms going off, bells going off, yeah. and uh, so, sir, you know, what would you <laughs> like me to do? Oh my and, goodness, go you know, everything starts going to hell. So, uh, usually after about thirty seconds of him flailing about, looking like an idiot, he go, "Okay, okay, guys, please just tell me I, I get it." <laughs> and so then we'd start going into action, and and he, oh, "Okay, yes, yes, do that, yes, do that." Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah, that's well, that, that, that makes things amusing. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are the, um, you know, like what are your quarters like there nowadays um, on the on the modern subs? So, uh, you have three racks from floor to ceiling. The one on the floor right. is only about uh, six inches off of the floor. Mm. Each rack you can lift uh, the bedpan up so that you have storage underneath. 
Oh, okay. And it's about enough, maybe two and a half, three inches thick, and then the full length and width of the rack. Oh, wow. And um, so whatever you can fit in there is what you bring underway. Hmm, I see. Um, and then, like, what about the, you know, dining facilities, that kind of stuff? I mean, is it, it's nothing like what you would find on, um, on surface here on surface craft, right? Right. No, no. Um, it's actually kind of more exclusive. Uh, the section the galley or the the eating area for the submarine you can see uh, maybe twelve or fifteen people at a time. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, I see. So what what what, what is the uh, total uh, occupancy? Oh yeah. What is the total, yeah, the ship's complement, so to speak? Uh, so generally 120 to 150. Oh, that, 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 that big a crew. Huh? Yeah. And this is for the smaller submarines. This is a fast attack that I was on. Oh. So um, the larger uh, ballistic missile subs have uh, 180 or so crew mates on board. But uh, for the fast oh, attack, wow. it's, it's drastically reduced. The other thing, too, that eats into the, the crew space is... Uh, it's not uncommon to have riders on board, so people who aren't specifically assigned to the submarine but oh. have some key purpose for the mission you're going out on. Oh. So you could have uh, cryptographers and radio men and stuff oh. like that. That Intelligence person. Yeah, intelligence people that are there to evaluate the data that you're able to suck in through uh, you know, radio reception from oh, nearby land. Do you, have your, do you have the shaver here? Maybe? Yes. So with the last part, I've already done all the ballooning and everything. Uh -huh. Now the last part is reducing the size of those uh, little turbinates. Uh -huh. So I've already we're starting underway on that, but we do that with a device. Uh, just hold that for a second. Uh, called a uh, micro debrider. It's also we call it a shaver. Okay. So it's going to go underneath the lining of that uh, turbinate and do that work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you the uh, sickle again? I'm just going to do that. On So what is the largest uh, submarine base in the United States? Where, where do you guys house that? Uh, the largest base is probably Norfolk and then San uh, yeah. Diego. Uh, oh, for yeah, for ballistic missile subs, it's okay. um, Kings, Kings Bay, Georgia, and Bremerton, Washington. Oh, really? Yeah. What's in Groton? Is it? Uh, Groton is, it's a shipyard, but it's... Um, they do a lot of surface ships, but then the submarine side of it up there, they uh, there are a few stationed there, but mostly it, they come up there for more training or retrofits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, what is your uh, assessment of uh, you know the U.S. subs mm -hmm. technologically versus uh, some of the uh, foreign navies? Um, far superior. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, the Russian Navy is pretty much mothballed. <coughs> really? Yeah, they're all rusting out and everything. There's been a... Turn it right. Wow. There's been a big push recently to try to bring the Russian Navy back to its prime time, but... Sure. Um, yeah, they, they were literally chopping up the submarines and using the parts for other stuff, melting down and all that. Now turn it on. Now you're just going to hear this... Uh, what we're doing is we're kind of uh, you know, just removing some of that tissue. Which okay. Just, yeah. Little part of this. I've done this side, and I'm going to go and do the other side here. During the height of the Cold War, we actually had a drastic lead on acoustics from our propulsion systems. And the milling software that we used to design the propellers and everything was considered uh, a munition. It was not allowed to be exported. Oh, yeah? And uh, um, Toshiba actually went around mm -hmm. and uh, they actually sold the milling software to the Russians. And it was basically overnight the Russian submarines got intensely quieter because oh, wow. yeah, because Toshiba went around uh, the lawn. How did Toshiba get it? 
Well, Toshiba were the designers. Oh, they did? Huh? Yeah, so they were the ones with the software to begin oh. with. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it was supposed to be exclusive to the U.S. You'd think they'd use the U.S. company more than they could. Yeah. And the best one on Earth yet? Um, we're essentially done here. Okay. I put in a little extra local, you know, just to give you some more uh, comfort. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Very little bit. Just a couple of CCs back here. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to need to do that. Do you, um, should they make a referral or anything? Do that. Okay, this is just a little um, self-dissolving foam. Okay. And it goes sort of in those areas that we work. Kind of uh, it prevents any scarring. It also allows for, you know, helps with any oozing. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to put that there. there. significant deposit that had to be irrigated out or no no we didn't get like with the balloon sometimes it inflates and it, the stuff will come no, in out we didn't get that Such a small um, injury for so many tools. They do um, yeah. Yeah. Let me um, oh, let me call over there. When you get a date for 